women's bodies have always been used to sell objects or products. You know, the sexy lie is that if you have a certain look as a woman, then doors will open for you. But I, that's not the full picture. When I was asked to curate this exhibition, um, I, I was specifically given an era from the 70s, 80s and 90s, which coincides with me. I was born in the 70s. Um, so all this work from the Arts Council collection, which was a really important uh, collection because for photographers who weren't working commercially, it was a source of recognition and, and, and funding. But, yeah, so it played such an important role in our visual history, and our photography, uh, photography history. And the 70s to the 90s, photography went under a great change. It started documentary, and then it went, there was a lot of feminist work came out towards the 70s and the 80s. And then it moved into the art world, and it was set free. And there's not one of us that doesn't have the innate visual intelligence to be able to decipher an image. What I don't like is um, high profit and profit margins um, are erosive, uh, are corrosive and erode young women's and, and men's um, sense of self and self-confidence and self-esteem trying to live up to this unattainable narrow definition of beauty that we're selling with all these products and clothes and everything else and you know I love being a woman it's great to be to dress up and to be young and to do all that sort of thing, but I don't want to find I don't want to uh, be either objectified or objectify myself because I know now I'm 43, and I suppose instinctively I've known that it's it's not empowering to be objectified. And I think there's something going on with our um, visual culture, whether it's music or advertising, that is undermining that, that is kind of filling our heads with nonsense about perfection and that we are measured by our um, appearance rather than our intellect. And I can see, I can see uh, the visual language that's being used in a lot of these adverts like American Apparel is coming from porn. And the problem with uh, pornog pornography is, you know, kids have access to this now. And I do worry that, you know, that the influence of porn is affecting uh, girls' and boys' relationships. And I think also aspects of our advertising, like American Apparel, are kind of normalizing that and saying it's okay. We've been sort of brainwashed to thinking that we're inadequate to the, the women and the men that we see in adverts. And obviously we have a buffer. We know that advertising is what it is. This sort of limited, limited language that adverts like American Apparel trade off is highly influential, subliminal. So, you know, it just seems to be a quick fix now for companies if their profit margins have gone down. Um, it's right, let's get out the guns, let's get out the gun for hire. And there's always a photographer that's, you know, will work in that way.
In the, in the 70s, um, there was just the climate of casual sexism. Sexism that we were so, um, it was so normalized that we almost didn't notice apart from very brave women who stood up against it. Oh, cinnamon, where you gonna run to? Cinnamon, where you gonna run to? gonna run to all on that day will I run to the rock please hide me and run to the rock uh, but there is an innocence to the 70s and actually also what's interesting is when you do see nudity in 70s advertising it's more about naturalism so they managed to cover a broad base of consumers but in a responsible way I, and I really clearly remember this lad culture came in. You had Loaded, you had FHM, you had Nuts magazine, all these sort of magazines that were that normally being on this top shelf were brought down as sort of lifestyle magazines. It's, it seemed to normalize, the very fact that it was on uh, supermarket shelves, it seemed to normalize this new aesthetic and this new way of Tending to empower women, but not empowering them, using the same old tricks. They kind of hijacked that idea of sexual equality and sexual empowerment. Suddenly it seemed to be okay to be offering yourself as a person. It's almost like self-objectification. And what, what came with that as well was Photoshop and retouching. And suddenly we had, um, we had people behind the camera and retouchers on the screen. Uh, sort of recreating out of what they got the, uh, the shot of uh, recreating their idea of what it means to be female. So the standard, um, the standard retouching job on either fashion or advertising will be for a woman to make the breast bigger, the waist smaller, the eyes bigger. Um, and actually that is, so that's what's being peddled, that's what's being sold to us. And it's actually a body frame that doesn't exist we don't critically engage enough with images. We don't question them enough and that they fly by us. And, and I, I think that's more true than, you know, than it ever was, actually, that we are so used to um, bodies being uh, manipulated and then used to sell things that we've normalized it. We don't even see it in our culture. But yet we now have you know, human beings changing their physical structure to match a retoucher's idea of the ultimate um, female body, which doesn't exist in the first place, so it's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm.